Jonathan Hunsaker here with Organics, and I'm joined by my good friend, Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey, thanks for joining us. Thank you. If you're not, if you don't know who Jeffrey is, he is the founder, the forefather, the godfather of the non-GMO movement. I mean, you've been there for 23 years and you really have been an activist that has not stopped to bring the information to the world about the dangers of genetically modified organisms. And now you've transitioned into not just talking about GMOs, but really talking about organic and why organic matters so much. And I just want to welcome you for being on this interview with you, with me. I want to thank you for being on this interview. And I'm just excited to share your knowledge with our audience. Thank you. So, I mean, tell us, Jeffrey, I, I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, most of our audience is very well versed in GMOs and organic, but for those that aren't, what are the main dangers of GMOs? Well, even people who are well versed have no idea, you know, like people see the movie Secret Ingredients, people who've grown up eating organic, speaking or organic, um, even people who've been on the organic standards board, uh, they are actually shocked at what it is that they're finding um, when, when they realize how dangerous GMOs and Roundup are, for example, in non-organic food. So I did a survey, uh, the Institute for Responsible Technology, our nonprofit, did a survey of 3,256 people asking them what did they notice got better when they switched to non-GMO and largely organic food. And over 85% of the respondents had an improved digestive tract, digestive system, from Crohn's disease to acid reflux to bloating to all these things. Now that was one of 28 different diseases or disorders that were reported as getting better. And I'll just read you the list in order of some of these because a lot of people suffer from these diseases and disorders and they don't realize that simply switching to organic for many people could be the answer. So 60% improved on more than 60% on fatigue, 54.6% obesity or overweight, or 50, about 52% brain fog, about 51% anxiety and depression, about half the people noticed an improvement in food allergies or sensitivities, and then below 50% memory and concentration, joint pain, seasonal allergies, gluten sensitivity, insomnia, eczema and other skin conditions, hormone problems, pain through the muscular skeletal system, autoimmune disease, eczema, as I mentioned, cardiovascular problems and high blood pressure, asthma, menstrual problems, diabetes, other mental disorders, underweight, cancer, kidney disease, infertility, autism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Now, where did we get this list? The reason I asked them about these 28 different conditions was because I had asked 150 audiences at lectures around the country, what did you notice got better in you when you switched to non-GMO and largely organic food? And about two dozen of them were medical conferences, so the doctors were speaking not on behalf of themselves, but each on behalf of thousands of, of clients or customers or, or patients. And so we, have, we had tremendous confidence that this was the list of regularly reported improvements. And sure enough, the same relative frequency that we saw in these 150 lectures was there in black and white in the survey, which became published in a peer-reviewed peer -reviewed article in the International Journal of, of um, Functional Medicine, of uh, International Journal of Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. And so um, it's kind of shocking to think that it's just a switch to non-GMO and organic, but in the film Secret Ingredients that you saw, we saw a dozen different people or more plus families switching to organic and autistic boys were no longer on the spectrum. Infertile couples have children, skin conditions going away, et cetera, et cetera. And the doctors were saying, this is a predictable result that they see in their practice over and over again. And so it's really important for those that are like leaning towards organic or favor organic Try going all organic and see what happens. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is we are the test subjects, right? None of this was tested. We didn't have any placebo, double blind controlled studies of GMO versus non-GMO corn in your diet or GMO soy or all these different things. We just introduced them to the market and we said they're healthy and, and they took over and, and now they're in everything. And so as people report 
unhealthy reactions or whatever, you know, we're, we're just getting all the feedback now from all of us being the experiments for 20 years. And not only that, but there were certain practitioners and others who were watching the before and after. So GMOs were planted in 1996 and soy and corn, and then it grew over time to become over 90% of those commodities plus canola. Um, and I was talking to Dr. Michelle Perro, who's in the film Secret Ingredients, and she said that starting in the early 2000s, she started to see in her, in her patients, she's a pediatrician, she started seeing in her young children a whole new set of diseases and disorders, complicated ones that were not responding to the normal treatment. And then she discovered that GMOs and Roundup were, and the toxins were probably the, the cause and started changing diets and started having the reversals that we already talked about. Um, I talked to uh, Dr. Barbara Royal, who's a veterinarian. She's Oprah Winfrey's veterinarian. And she started seeing in the pets and the dogs and cats new types of disorder, disorders and diseases that were not prevalent before GMOs were introduced. And she also figured it out. And now the first thing she does is put the animals on a, on a healthy non-GMO, uh, no glyphosate diet, and 80 to 90% of them get better right away and some of them, half of those are completely better and don't even have to return. Um, then Dr. Michael Fox, who, was a, who wrote the, the syndicated column Animal Doctor, he had 25 to 30 million readers. He found that in the late 90s, he was getting a raft of letters from people all over the country saying, all of a sudden my dog or cat has intractable diarrhea, itching, allergies. He said, get them off the GMOs. He told me he has a file cabinet full of letters saying it worked. Then we speak to veterinarians dealing with animals on the farm. And sure enough, the same thing. Problems with the gut bacteria, problems with new disorders and diseases that were not there beforehand. In fact, I've talked to farmers that blamed it on other things when they put their cows onto GMOs thinking they thought, oh, the reason why now they're sick for the last 14 years is something else. And then as a fluke, they put them on non-GMO and then they get better like they used to be 14 years ago. And so we see the before and after, and then occasionally there's a side by side. There was a Dr. Mike McNeil, who I interviewed as part of my summit, Healing from GMOs and Roundup. He's a um, plant pathologist and an agronomist, and he actually did a test on farm. They took, took 2,000 pigs in one nursery and 2,000 pigs in another nursery. And for one nursery, non-GMO, no Roundup or its uh, active ingredient glyphosate in the water, completely clean diet. The other group had the same diet, except it was GMO and they didn't take, they didn't take preparations to remove the Roundup in the food or in the water. In the group that was in the clean diet, in the time that they were raising the pigs and putting them to market, there was one death. In the GMO fed group, there was 400 deaths out of 2000 pigs and it took them longer to gain the weight to get to market. And these kind of side by side, it's absolutely astonishing the numbers that we see. But what I would like to recommend is not to wait for more tests, to immediately do an experiment on your own body, get a diet and symptom di uh, a diary together, figure out what your mood level is, your energy level, all your symptoms rated one to 10, and, and start now and then switch to an all organic diet for several weeks and see what happens. In fact, if you're like Dr. Emily Lindner, who years ago had put 5,000 uh, 5, of her patients on a non-GMO and organic diet, she said they all noticed an improvement. She see it was a predictable change and she could even say how many days it took for the anxiety and depression to go away, for the allergies to start to clear up, and for the digestive system to start to improve. It's phenomenal, and it's an easy test to do. I mean, we talk about it at Organics all the time that different things work for different people. There's not just one magical diet that's gonna work for everybody. There's not one magical supplement that everybody needs. There's, not, there's none of these magic pills. It's just different for everybody. But I think the one thing that we can all agree upon is that organic is better than non-organic, that making sure that it's non-GMO is better than a GMO pesticide, herbicide sprayed crop that's been genetically modified to, to fight off, you know, to, to, to not be, uh, what's the best way to put it, to, to genetically modify to 
be able to withstand the Roundup being sprayed on it, the glyphosate on it, where it's not killing it and it kills everything else around it. So I love the idea that you put it back in the hands of the listener. Just try it. Um, I mean, I know, and, and you practice what you preach. You're out here at my house. Uh, a couple months ago, we decided to order some lunch and you got on the phone with the chef uh, of the restaurant and said, I, I need to make sure is all of this organic non-GMO. And I think we're going to order some Brussels sprouts and they were cooked in an oil that was not non-GMO. And you asked that they were pan fried. I mean, this is, yes, it, it might take a little bit additional work, but you know the effects of it. And it's worth taking that 30 seconds to make sure you're eating organic. And the thing is, I end up eating not only healthier, but better. I mean, I remember even in Disney World, I had chefs coming out, talking to me, says, okay, I'll cook your meal in the olive oil instead of the genetically engineered soybean oil. I says, while you're at it, do it for the rest of the people at the table, please. And so, and so you end up with, I was just at a, a, a couple of days ago at a restaurant and the chef came out and talked to me. And he said, you know, here, I can do this entire customized meal for you if you want. So it actually, and you, meet, and you make, make friends and you educate people at the same time and you get better and you get better and you get better. And then others watching you do this in a non-hassling way without, without passion and energy that, that gets dumped on people, they then learn as you did when I was at your house ordering the Brussels sprouts. Absolutely. And, and we're not eating at these high end fancy places. I mean, this, uh, the restaurant we're at is a little farm to market restaurant. There were, I don't know, $8, $10 lunch plates. I mean, it was nothing special. It's just a matter of taking the time to find out what are you putting in your body because it matters that much. I mean, I'm a full believer of organic non-GMO. It's, it's one of the staples behind our supplement line. It's why I'm so adamant that all of our ingredients are organic and that they're non-GMO and that we go the extra mile. I mean, there, there's all kinds of trends that come out, right? The bone broth trend came out um, a couple years ago and, and everybody jumped on that bandwagon. And, you know, we, we did for a second and then we realized, oh no, we can't get it USDA certified organic, stop. Let's stop selling it until we can get USDA certified organic because, and why don't you share, I mean, share some of the facts around bone broth and why it's so important that it's organic. Well, like bone broth is interesting because when they do radio labeled studies of the chief poison in Roundup, which is called glyphosate, it, it ends up migrating to the bone. In fact, I remember uh, listening to Brent Wisner, the chief attorney who won two of the three uh, successful lawsuits against Monsanto. He had uh, two of them and you know, the last one, the, Monsanto, the jury forced Monsanto to pay $2 billion for punitive damages. That'll probably be taken down by the judge to a lower amount, but $2 billion. And he pointed out that non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is what his clients had, uh, originates in the bone. And he said, and glyphosate migrates to the bone according to Monsanto's own research. So if you're doing bone broth and you're taking bones from animals that have been fed largely Roundup Ready soy or corn or canola meal or cotton meal or alfalfa. These are the six main GMOs. All of them are non are basically Roundup Ready, uh, and some of them also can produce their own insecticide. But they're Roundup Ready, which means they've been doused with Roundup. So there's a tremendous amount of Roundup going into the animal, moving into the bone. And now you take those bones and then you boil it and and that ends up in the water because it's water soluble. And then you put it into a capsule. It's like, this is not something you want to do. So congratulations and thank you for paying attention. You know, it's interesting that <clears throat> back in 2006, when the non-GMO project became widely recognized by the, the industry, the natural products industry as the standard they wanted to adopt, all of the people on the, on the steering committee, on the board were food people. And I was, I remember going to Expo West, uh, which is the big convention for the natural products industry. And I went, I need to think about the supplements. Now, I'm not with the non-GMO project, but I was hoping we support them and endorse them. And I started approaching different supplement makers and saying, the, the big thing about supplements at that time, which was, you know, 13 years ago, was that no one wanted to talk about GMOs in the supplements because it was a hidden factor because there was so many GMOs being used. In fact, some of the products that were being sold 
um, were coming from genetically engineered bacteria or yeast turned into a little production factory to produce an amino acid, for example. And so there was the big problem and no one wanted to talk about it, but just a handful were starting to pioneer food-based supplements where they could actually be non-GMO and organic. So that, so it's something that a lot of people don't think about originally. They think about their food and then they just eat their supplements thinking that it's assuming, the, assuming to be healthy. So I, I am alerting people, yes, not just your food, but your supplements, and by the way, your dog food and your cat food. And so, so it's very important. And thank you for having that. I remember when I went to Expo West this past year in 2019, um, I saw you at your booth and um, uh, your colleague said to me that when your testing lab walked by and said, oh, you're with organics? We test for you. By the way, you have the best results of anyone. I'm like, oh, wow. You're like, this is like, you're my family. Because you actually test, first of all, for purity. And you source so well that you got the number one rating so obviously better than the competition that this guy volunteered that information to you and excitement by walking by. You know, and that to me is a great story uh, verifying the care that you take and the purity that I would want to see. Yeah, thank you. I get chills hearing you tell this story, and, uh, and it was about us and our company. Um, it's, it's really interesting because it's been an uphill battle. Um, it has not been easy. Listen, we can get bone broth out of China, you know, chicken bone broth for like four bucks a pound. Right. And we could be like all these other um, people that you see on Amazon just slinging some bone broth. Instead, we pay twenty two dollars per canister to produce our our bone broth, just the uh, just the bone broth powder, not including the flavor. We're probably twenty five dollars after packaging all in on our bone broth. And that's that's unheard of in our space. I mean, everybody's producing stuff for five, six, seven dollars a container and when we're willing to spend 25 because it's the only way we can get USDA certified organic chicken bone broth powder that we're just well we either not sell it or sell that higher quality one and it's been challenging in the market to explain that sometimes um, that listen this is why we're more expensive this is why it's as cheap as we can make it and yet our margins are minimal compared to these other people with 10x margins and the thing is, the reason why the mathematics, for people who are not thinking about the supply chain and the animals, let me just fill in some gaps here. Now, why would it be so expensive? If you have an animal that's eating, you know, so many pounds of feed, right? Now, if you get the cheapest feed, the cheapest feed is going to be GMO, it's going to be sprayed, it's going to be full, it may even have heavy metals in it, etc. But if you're going to get non-GMO feed, or better yet, organic feed, then you're gonna be paying more per pound and that's the throughput into the animal, whether it's chicken or whatever. You're in other words, every day as that animal is growing, you're investing a premium, which you know, for, for some animals, it becomes so expensive to sell that meat um, that it becomes, it's like a specialty item you have to buy off the farm because no one in their right mind would just order the order who's used to thinking of commodity pork, for example. So the, the mathematics is, unless you're in a region where for some reason, like grass-fed is, is, is easier, grass-fed beef, because you don't, the, the, the difference in terms of the paying the, for the GMO versus the non-GMO, like for that, you can get grass that's non-GMO, that's not sprayed. And so it doesn't even have to be organic to be clean, as long as the, the raising of the grass is fine. Um, but when you start to feed grains into animals, they can get very expensive very quickly. Even the, um, the capsules, the uh, gelatin capsules can be from animals that have been fed uh, GMOs or, or non-organic and you can't get certification on the gel capsule because it's 7% of the product and in order to be certified, you have to have 95% of the product to be, uh, uh, certain to be organic. So we kind of like, it's stacked against a lot of manufacturers. I've, I've interviewed a lot of them and I know the details. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that's another thing to explain because all of our powders carry USDA certified organic seal on them because there's not a capsule that's included with it. We're waiting for some capsules to be certified organic. Then we can do USDA certified on every one of our, our supplements. So what we have is made with organic ingredients. 
which means all of the ingredients in the product are there. We just don't hit that 95% mark because the capsule makes up 7% of the product. And not a lot of people want to buy the empty capsules and load them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That, that, that would be a much harder sell. Yeah. It's, it, it's just really interesting. I appreciate you sharing this information because organic has changed my life. When I started my health journey five years ago, I was smoking pack and a half of cigarettes a day. I was 260 pounds drinking like it was, you know, like it was going out of style and just, just no, no ambition apparently to live and live healthy. And then I started, I, cre I, I joined a health company and started a health company, created a documentary and started learning from you and learning from all these other doctors and quit smoking and started eating organic and got rid of all the GMOs. And, you know, since it dropped 80 pounds and, you know, super healthy, just ran my first marathon a month ago. I mean, I know the difference that organic and non-GMO has made in my life. And yes, there's other things, right? I mean, there's, there's working out, there's other stuff to do it, but the organic non-GMO, when you make that commitment in your life, it changes everything. It changes your mindset around other things. It changes your um, decision-making process because it's those little decisions. Do you grab the chips? Do you grab the junk? Do you grab this? Or do you have the mindset, I'm only gonna eat organic. And when you think that, you tend to reach for the healthier food. And even if you go for the junk, at least get the organic junk, right? Oh yeah, um, Quite frankly. And so, and I know Terry Ann, she's the CEO of Organics. Organic non-GMO, I mean, listening to your interview changed her entire life. She was having all kinds of health issues and most of the people in the company. And so we, at one point, we were called epigenetic labs when we first started the business. Um, and it was under the idea, you know, the study of epigenetics mm -hmm. can change your genetic makeup through diet and exercise. And as we became more educated, we realized that what really mattered and what the market really needed was organic non-GMO supplements and somebody that was willing to draw a line in the sand so deep, so rigid that we weren't going to cross it, right? And so we changed our name to Organics from Epigenetic Labs. We made sure that we were sourcing everything USA certified. And it was, it was a crazy rabbit hole that we went down because we found that it was a lot harder to find your turmerics. It was a lot harder to find mushrooms. I mean, we, we found a manufacturer where we worked with them to create the mushroom farm to be able to have organic mushrooms and then ferment them ourselves so that we could, firm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but what, I never set out to own a supplement company or an organic supplement company, right? I just set out on a health journey. And as I kept going down the path, the rabbit hole got deeper and deeper. It was like, well, I can't stop now and I can't sell people crap that I wouldn't take or give to my family. And so now we've ended up with a, a line that's all organic GMO. And, and now it's just a matter of educating the world why that matters so much. And that's why we're such big fans of you because that's what you do constantly. And thank you. It's good to know that the knowledge does actually have organizing power and changes people's lives. It's interesting that you use the word epigenetics. I'm going to mention a scary fact here. Um, I interviewed Dr. Michael Skinner, uh, and you can find it on the Institute for Responsible Technologies um, Facebook page. Uh, and he is the principal at Skinner Labs, which is part of Washington State University. And he's been studying epigenetics, the impact of how substances taken in or exposed to one generation can change the gene expression. Now, it doesn't change the order of the genes, that's fixed, but it changes which genes are active and which genes are not, and that actually can be inherited. This is new information in the last couple of, you know, decades, where literally the stress or the famine or the food eaten by your grandmother can affect your health. And what, the, what Michael did was he injected female rats who were pregnant with uh, glyphosate, uh, the active ingredient or the chief poison in Roundup. And then he tested the health of the female rats and their offspring and their offspring's offspring and their offspring's offspring's offspring. And the group that was injected, there was no measurable problem. The immediate offspring that were already in, in fetal stage when the injection occurred, they didn't have a problem that he noted. But the grandchildren had a lot of problems and the great grandchildren had even more. In fact, 90% of them had serious diseases. There were birth defects, there was a high death rate 
at the, when they were giving birth among either the parents or the, 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 the pups, um, there was prostate disease and kidney disease and all sorts of issues, 90% of them, and obesity. And, you know, he pointed out in the interview, what's going to happen to our great-grandchildren when this whole generation has been exposed to Roundup and glyphosate? So this raises another point, like he didn't actually have a solution on his own. And I actually feel like I, I might be able to offer something because people ask me the number one question I get asked around the world, you know, 45 countries, how do I avoid GMOs? And we go into that and we've talked about it and why. But another, the second most popular question is, what else can I do? And for years, I'd say it's above my pay grade. I'm not a healer. So I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. And then I started to educate the scientists and the doctors about the dangers, speaking at medical conferences, and they started to develop ways to heal from GMOs and Roundup. So <clears throat> I gathered 18 people, experts together, and interviewed them as part of a summit uh, at healingfromgmos. Dot com And it turns out that there are ways to counter, to detox, repair, and rebuild the system in addition to just avoiding GMOs and Roundup. So we were talking about supplements, and a lot of these doctors talked about supplements. One was raving about collagen, for example, as a key to the process of rebuilding the body after GMOs and Roundup. A lot of them talked about inflammation. Turmeric came up several times. I know you have turmeric. You may not realize that you have a, a, a toolbox or a, a doctor's armamentarium for helping people heal from GMOs and Roundup. The inflammation we talked, I mean, we went specifically as to how GMOs and Roundup can lead to inflammation. We saw animal feeding studies showing the inflammation. We had the understanding of how Roundup can damage the gut walls and lead to inflammation, how the gut walls can have gaps causing leaky gut, which creates inflammation and systemic inflammation and autoimmune disease, and how anti-inflammatory substances like turmeric can be part of that process. We talked about Roundup's ability, glyphosate in particular, to chelate or grab onto minerals, making them unavailable, which shuts down certain metabolic pathways. So what do you need to do? One of the ways is remineralize. So, you know, the supplements that contain vitamins and minerals help repair the body from the damage of GMOs and Roundup. We talked about the fact that glyphosate is a patented antibiotic. See, these are, when I say these things, this helps explain why the 28 different diseases were commonly improved when people got into an, an organic diet because <clears throat> now they have the, the minerals made available. They have the neurotransmitters like melatonin, serotonin, and dopamine functioning because that pathway that pr helps produce that can be shut down with glyphosate. They, have the, they can just restore the integrity of the gut so they don't have that chronic inflammation and autoimmune uh, boost. The mitochondria, which drive energy, can be healthier and that can explain the brain fog and the fatigue. Um, the glyphosate can suppress digestive enzymes in, in certain studies. So uh, that can explain many different things. And, you know, the supplements that contain enzymes help, supply, help counter that. And then there's the fact that the microbiome is damaged. Now, the microbiome, if anyone's been awake, listen, reading the cutting edge research on health, the microbiome is like the big new organ. You know, it's got 90% of the, of the cells in our body are the microbiome, the bacteria, viruses, et cetera, that are inside of us. It, it works on detoxification. It works on immunity. It works on digestion. And, you know, if you take a fecal transplant, you take someone's um, feces or like an animal, or, and then you insert it into another animal, the diseases or the size, whether they're obese or thin, from the first gets transferred to the second because there's information. 98% of the DNA in our bodies is from the microbiome. And a lot of the RNA, which is like the, the crosstalk, is from the microbiome. So a lot of the body's intelligence and how it responds and how it deals with disorders and diseases are coded into that. And that gets either transferred in a fecal transplant, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about damaging it through antibiotics. Now, most antibiotics have like a carpet bombing effect where they just kill equally, but glyphosate 
kills specifically the beneficial bacteria and not the pathogens in general. So the E. coli, salmonella, botulism, they can grow, whereas the lactobacillus, the bifidobacteria, the good stuff that we want in yogurt, in probiotics, that can be destroyed. So part of the countering of the impact of GMOs and Roundup is the supplementation for the microbiome. So you could see how um, it's like, it's a whole new area for me to interview these, these physicians and product formulators and scientists, but it demonstrates that there's actually a need. In fact, one, one doctor, Lee Cowden, and he doesn't practice for individuals anymore. He just creates protocols for other physicians. He said he's been testing the, the mineral requirements for the, human, for the U.S. population for years, and he says it's growing over time. People need more minerals over time now than before. Why? Because glyphosate ga- grabs on the minerals and renders them unusable. So you need more minerals to, to, to counteract that. And so even the, even the supplement requirements are going up because of the, the increased use of Roundup. Now, Roundup is not just sprayed on GMOs. It's also sprayed on the grains and the beans just before harvest to dry down and kill off the product. It, it can force, and force uh, uh, the ripening. Um, it can kill the weeds for next year at the same time. It can get rid of the moisture. There's a lot of thing, reasons why from a farmer's perspective, spray the oats, spray the lentils, spray the wheat. From the human perspective, don't you dare because that is a significant portion of the amount of glyphosate in our diet. And glyphosate is not only all the things we talked about, but it also can be a hormone disruptor and it's a carcinogen. It's a class 2A carcinogen, according to the World Health Organization. So it's nasty stuff. It's nasty stuff and we don't want it. And so the two things are avoid GMOs and Roundup. And then if you want to do more, then there's healing from GMOs and Roundup, which is the detoxification, the repair and the rebuilding. Yeah, you said so much I want to touch on. I'll pick just a couple of things. I mean, this is, you know, and, I, and I'm not tooting our horn. Whatever your favorite supplements are, take them. I'm just advocating for taking organic non-GMO supplements. Because if you're taking a turmeric to help reduce inflammation, and you've been consuming a lot of genetically modified foods um, or non-organic foods, and that's causing inflammation, if your turmeric is not organic, it's likely you know, has pesticides on it and herbicides on it and other things that might be in, uh, other things that might be mixed into your turmeric may have been sprayed with stuff. And now you're getting high concentrations of those pesticides and herbicides, right? Because you've broken down this turmeric, you've turned it into a powder, you've refined it, refined it, refined it. But it's not like they're filtering out the glyphosate or the Roundup or the herbicide or whatever's been sprayed on it. And so now you're trying to fight the inflammation and detox out of it, but yet you're taking a supplement, you know, that, that's just adding more in it with high concentrations of it. Um, and it's, just, it's the same thing, I mean, whether it's the turmeric or mushrooms or, um, you know, our detox supplement, a lot of people take that to help detox from GMOs, um, from heavy metals, from different things like that as well. And it, to me, it's just interesting that, you know, when I first started in, in, in the business, I hear about multivitamins. You think, all right, well, there's these, all multivitamins are good. And you realize, well, most of the multivitamins that are out there on the store shelves and, you know, at your Walgreens and CVSs and Walmarts and things like that are, are just synthetic multivitamins that are petroleum byproduct, right? They've been extracted from oil and things like that. And your body just can't do anything with it. You might as well just, you know, hand the money to a homeless person because you're throwing the money away, right? And, and you realize, okay, well, now there's, you know, there's multivitamins out there that are whole food plant-based multivitamins. Well, that's a good alternative. And we start going down the rabbit hole even further. And it's like, well, but if it's not organic, right, then now you're just getting a bunch of the other junk inside of it. So yes, it's better than synthetic, but it's not organic non-GMO. And so I just, as people go down their own health journeys, I think a lot of times you think, oh, well, it's a supplement, so it's good for me. But there's different levels of good in your supplements. You can take a synthetic multivitamin that's useless, right? You can take a whole food, non-organic multivitamin or other supplement, and maybe it'll do some good, but you're still getting these herbicides and pesticides mixed in with it. Or you can take a supplement that truly is organic from non-GMO plants and actually reap, 
you know, 5X, 10X the benefits of one of the other ones because you're not adding poison back in as you're trying to clean the poison out. And, and I want to re-mention re that some of those vitamins are actually derived from genetically modified bacteria or virus or, vi or um, yeasts. <clears throat> and I want to take a, a detour here for just a second about that piece. Uh, we can call it synthetic biology or using GMOs to create little micro factories. Um, in 1995, there was a study where um, some people took genes from yeast, <clears throat> inserted it into yeast, so it would produce more of what they wanted. And it ended up producing 40 to 200 times more of a toxin, <clears throat> which might cause cancer. So this was a shock to them. And they realized that <clears throat> they were not aware of the biochemical pathway that was gonna do that. It was a complete side effect. And they actually put out a warning saying, it has to be very careful if you're gonna be genetically engineering yeast to, um, for food products because it could create side effects and, and contaminants. And it actually, before that had happened, <clears throat> there was another company, Showadenko KK from Japan, that had taken um, a, a culture of bacteria and inserted genes to produce L-tryptophan more economically. They already had a fermentation vat to produce L-tryptophan, which is an amino acid, and they were selling it, but they decided to genetically engineer the bacteria to produce even more so they didn't have to add by hand stuff that the, the, the organism could produce itself. And that created a contaminant, um, <clears throat> their process that almost certainly was <clears throat> the driver of an epidemic that killed about 100 Americans and caused, caused five to 10,000 10, to fall sick or become permanently disabled. It was hush hushed, it was, it was hidden, covered up. The FDA never reported the genetic engineered organ, um, origins to Congress when they testified. Uh, and there was a whole effort to protect and promote GMOs in spite of the fact that a deadly epidemic was created by a genetically engineered factory, to, uh, you know, the microorganisms. Now we have something like called the impossible burger, which is saying, oh, it's the vegan alternative. It's the, the, the environmentally safe. Well, it's created from genetically engineered yeast. They genetically engineer um, with a gene from soybean roots that have never been part of the human food supply. So the FDA said well, they can't grant it generally recognized as safe. It's completely new. And instead of just purifying that out of the yeast, they ended up scooping up 46 other proteins. So they have this yeast sludge that they put into the Impossible Burger. People are reporting getting sick after eating the Impossible Burger. We hear, we have to verify that, but there's no follow-up, there's no safety studies. <clears throat> and now that same process of turning yeast and bacteria into microorganisms, into microfactories is, is targeting the herbs is targeting ashwagandha, is targeting is the spices, is targeting uh, vanilla, some natural vanilla flavoring comes from genetically engineered yeast, um, stevia, uh, there's, they're targeting uh, saffron. They're taking these expensive things that take a lot of uh, labor uh, and, and generations and generations of people that have built a culture around it. You're gonna wipe out that culture and produce something from a technology that's prone to side effects and prone to contaminants and doesn't necessarily contain the health properties. And some are, are ignoring the fact that it's from genetically engineered origins and calling it natural. And some may call it non-GMO. And so if you eat organic products, you get around that because organic doesn't allow that. Non-GMO project verified doesn't allow that. So there's now a gene rush. This is just one of many new technologies which is being targeted to introduce in enormous numbers. And so rather than trying to figure out whether this particular product is genetically engineered in the, B, the B12 or this, or this B vitamin and whatnot, just switch to organic right away to protect yourself from not only what we do know, but from the future of genetic engineering, which involves these synthetic biologies, but also some other very dangerous technologies as well. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's unfortunate in the place that we're in, right? You can't, natural means nothing on the label, right? Um, there's other words that, that sound great, but, you know, nature or nature is this or natural that. And it's, it, does, it doesn't mean anything. There's no requirements around it. Organic, there's requirements around using the term organic. There's requirements around um, having the USDA certified organic on, you know, on your product, on your food, whatever it is. 
And, uh, and yeah, it, it's a good point. It's, we're, this is kind of the mission that we're on. We know that this is an information miss mission, right? Like we have to have good products, but the big battle is information. And it's to go a lot deeper than supplements. Like I, if people buy our supplements, great, thank you. But really what I wanna do is change the industry, right? Just like I wanna go into my local grocery store, my local Kroger's, and I wanna see the organic section in the fruits and vegetables be 90% of, of that section, not this little 10% put off in the corner, right? And the only way to do that is just the education and people vote with their dollars. And so the more that people go out and they buy uh, organic fruits and vegetables and organic products and non-GMO products, the more they buy supplements that are USDA certified organic and non-GMO, then the more money goes into those markets to invest into farmers and the, far and the demand goes up. And so now more farmers switch from growing uh, GMO crops and they go to growing organic non-GMO crops and they may let the soil uh, get stronger. They're not just turning things over as much because there's more demand. People are, and the more we turn farmers uh, into it, then the price starts going down. Now we have more farmers. I mean, it's all supply and demand. And the only way we get there is through information. And so, and well, through information and action, right? So step one is that let's give the information. Step two is, is really convincing people to take action. That's why for me, like I, if you buy our products, wonderful. But if you don't, that's totally fine by me. It's not, it, it's, it doesn't change a whole lot here. What I want to see happen is that you buy organic and non-GMO because that changes the industry. And that's where massive change happens, right? And that's what's gonna affect my two daughters. I have two and four year old daughters. Like if we change the industry, if we change the food supply, then they get to grow up and get older in a, a much healthier environment and they're not test subjects to all this crap that we have going on right now. Well, it's music to my ears because as you know, I'm an activist and that's my job. It's like behavior change messaging. Um, we decided to tackle the GMO issue uh, 23 years ago and no one was talking about the health dangers. They were talking about the environmental dangers, the patenting, the, the farmers kind of loss of saving seeds but no NGO or nonprofit was really focusing on the health dangers and to me that's where the battle is fought and won and so we have been pioneering the behavior change messaging um, and bringing it out to the world and we have a lot of colleagues now doing the same and that has started a tipping point of consumer rejection in the United States of GMOs and that has resulted in so many companies very large companies scrambling to replace the GMO uh, ingredients in their products to declare non-GMO. And so we are winning that battle, but because Roundup and other toxic pesticides are sprayed on non-GMO, you can buy, for example, a non-GMO verified loaf of bread with wheat that it was sprayed three to five days before harvest with Roundup, because that will, you know, that's a common, a common procedure. Three to five days before harvest, which means that and the, the glyphosate gets into the crop, migrates to the fastest growing part of the, of the crop, which is the seed, and that ends up being part of the grain, and that ends up being in your, in your food. Or oats, which also gets, gets absorbed right in from the spray, right into the oats. So they actually have higher levels of, of glyphosate residues than even um, the wheat. Uh, at the Institute for Responsible Technology and at secretingredientsmovie.com, we have ways that people can see the list of the products that have high levels of glyphosate and it's not just the beans and grains, it's in citrus, it's in wine, etc. because the use of Roundup for spot spraying and clearing rows is used a lot. So <clears throat> thank you, Jonathan, for being a, um, for focusing on the details so that your customers don't have to. Uh, thank you for, for jumping the hurdles uh, because, you know, my job is to convince people with the facts that really they have to go non-GMO and organic. And, you know, in the beginning when I was doing it, there weren't a lot of choices. So thank you for being a choice for where people can go once they are convinced. And so they can have that level of confidence. Absolutely. Well, we're a product of you, right? <laughs> so if you weren't out there doing it, th th this wouldn't happen. Listen, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I did not uh, think that I was going to grow up and own a supplement company. But when you, go on that journey to health and you get woken up to what's going on out there in the world and you have the ability to make change. That's what happened. And we started going down the rabbit hole and how do you stop? It's, 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 I hate to use the analogy of Neo in the matrix, right? Because it's overused. 
And it's a very fitting analogy because, you know, uh, once you take that red pill and you start realizing where you're going, how do you stop in your right mind? I mean, um, as a business owner, I am um, a conscious capitalist. I understand that we have to make profits to stay in business. And I, I don't need to make profits at the expense of other people's health, at the expense of people getting sick, at the expense of, of other people, um, the way that a lot of uh, unfortunately, larger companies go about it. And so as we went down the rabbit hole, it was like, well, we're not going to stop until we get to the bottom of it and we can just find the best products out there. And then we'll tackle the big problem. How do you market, right? A really expensive product to make with products out there that are, you know, that are created for two and $3 a bottle. And the reality is, is we can get close, you know, but we're, we're never going to be as cheap as that Amazon turmeric, you know, that's $30. Um, and you know, you'll probably see a big difference in your results between theirs and ours. And so I say all that, I, I go down rabbit holes often now that I went down this rabbit hole, um, because you're the reason that we're down this path. It's, it, it's, it's you making this broad knowledge and, and bringing it to the world and making your documentaries and influencing people and doing it with truth and with facts and with science, right. And not just making some claims and not backing it up. And now you know, there's companies like ours, there's hundreds of other companies because of you. Um, Monsanto is losing loss is losing lawsuits because of you. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. So I've got to imagine that, uh, that it feels pretty good uh, that your journey is making such a big difference in the world. Well, thank you. And it does feel good. And I appreciate that. And I, I hear all the time how people, I mean, all the time, testimonials of people whose lives have turned around from switching their diet and um, what, what I'm looking at now are, are national and international trends, trying to reverse those. I mean, we've tracked more than 30 diseases, others have tracked and we've used their data, um, more than 30 diseases which are on the rise, um, rising in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and the Roundup sprayed on them. We want to see those trends changed. So uh, thank you for what you're doing and you're welcome as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's a great way to end this. I'm going to have you on for some more interviews. I want to go deeper um, into some dives, into some specifics, but we'll, we'll save that for another day. And uh, Jeffrey, I just, I greatly appreciate you. I know I speak for not just everybody in my company that loves you and the mission that you're on, but all of our customers and everybody in the world um, for what you're doing and the fight that you're fighting. So thank you, Jeffrey, for this interview and just thank you for being you. Thank you, Jonathan. Safe eating. Awesome.